All right, Ferg, thank you so much for, well, for asking me to ask you questions. Uh, for, oh, you you're know, welcome. Thank uh, you. Uh, yeah. I want to talk about the garden gate in garden gate. So pleasurable. You place those marks in with care and you end up with a place. Um, yeah, well, I, 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 I've often um, enjoyed doing exactly that. And especially if those places um, don't really exist. I mean, that, that place does exist, but, but, but a lot of the other works, they don't. And so you're, I do feel like I am building somewhere and creating mm -hmm. a little world. I'm going to use the garden gate as a kind of gateway to the rest or use that as a metaphor for trying mm -hmm. to explore some of the other paintings in the show. So the mountain paintings, tell me just a little bit yes. about those. The mountains one, I think it was called, it's the one with the, the sort of Himalaya mountain on that. Mm. That I, I did use um, source material to, you know, paint that from. And, but the other three um, are entirely just made up in the studio with with, yep. with nothing to, to work from just 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 from my imagination i guess um and i find that method quite a very simple way of working with 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 that sort of subject matter yep. and quite effective and something that I, I love doing they evoke something in me and hopefully other people yeah um and again they're not you know they're titled very very plainly mountains and, and numbered because that that's essentially all they are mm -hmm. you're taking just sheer the sheer pleasure of applying paint and seeing what it gives you and then nudging it slightly toward a scene and then a scene starts to emerge and again you're you're at this balance point between depicting somewhere and something in this case that doesn't exist mm. and just just the beautiful blends between one color and another um yeah it is still a very noble thing to make paintings that are designed for a domestic setting let's talk about the crowd painting shall we yeah um they started out really of, of you know i i you know i was using photos to, to to paint from for those and there are photos that i had or had acquired and I think what spoke to me initially about the image was that they already looked like paintings. So mm -hmm. that, that appealed to me to actually want to turn them into paintings in some respect. Yeah. And as I was painting them, I sort of discovered that the, the abstract forms of the, of the clothes of, as soon as you get a large group of people together and they become, it, the, the shapes just become abstract and the colors, mm -hmm. but, but yet they still have a very defining quality of character with each each individual and I was getting that also without even painting their faces which which I thought was interesting that I didn't have to paint to spend too much time on on the actual face to to give a sense of character and um and belonging in in you know in the picture I was looking at the the background in crowd three the way that you've treated those trees or begun to treat those trees and then held off it's yeah. just you know yeah no, that, well that's exactly exactly what would have happened you know i you go in thinking of one thing and how finished it's going to be and then you you just stop as soon as you you know you never finish a painting do you, you just abandon it when it's but the the level of finish that let's say the crowd paintings are at is is rather like someone just taking a risk and sharing a, an incomplete thought with you well it's you know, I mean, it, it's. I think it's an instinct that's in us to want to make sense of a picture, isn't it? To want to allocate yeah. meaning and place and narrative. Um, and the fact that the people that many people who see these paintings are on the hunt for that and want to ask you is, I think, it's great. Uh, yeah, it's much better to open a question up than to give an answer, isn't it? let's talk about the washing washing line painting well i'm probably not not the only one to think you know how nice a washing washing can look um i know that when i hang up the washing i try and make it look nice <laughs> it strikes me as one of the most intimate paintings i've seen you make okay um, i mean or confessional you know um because there are plenty of well kitchen sink uh paintings that you could make of things around the house but the drying rack for your washing and the washing on it every 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 sinew of it is um an intimate detail about who you are and what family life is for, like for you so the snow scene painting when i look to the background again 
uh, like with a lot of the crowd paintings, the care in those trees, the drawing, mm. and the paint sort of shimmering together um, makes gives you this sort of hit of sense sincerity. Quite quite a good rule that I have most of the time is not to get too fiddly. Um, yeah. But I have this thing about decisions and trying to take people right back to the unit of a painting to a brush mark, which is a decision and how okay. you stack and how you stack decisions. Are you conscious of making those decisions kind of pure? I think so. I mean, some of the most beautiful passages of paint I can think of in Velasquez or Vermeer. They're not well, they're hard won because the experience to do so little with a brush. Well, that takes decades to achieve, but mm. actually they must have taken, you know, 10 minutes, a wash and then a couple of dabs over the top and you've got a tree or silk. The way that Velasco has painted silk is so, so quick. I think we've uh, covered a lot of ground there, haven't we? Yeah, we have. Thanks, Tom.